All right, so what I am about to do is this is a portion of my sword collection. And this is a very interesting project. What I'm going to attempt to do is pack all these into a large box and then get them to Dubai from the United States. Now, as you might imagine, countries like Dubai don't exactly like weapons imported into their countries. So I'm going to have to be a little creative in how I do this. I already talked to someone in Dubai, uh, the security over there, and they said that as long as the swords weren't sharp, and fortunately for me, these swords are not sharp. These are decorative weapons. So not really weapons. They're decoration only. And as long as they're not sharp, and as long as I'm a legal resident, which I am, of Dubai, this should be okay for me to import into their country. So we'll find out. So I'm going to document. I thought it might be interesting, because some of you guys are interested in these, these nuanced details when you move out of the country, and you have interesting uh, logistics like this. I'm going to document how I pack these swords, <laughs> how exactly I'm going to get them to the airport, how I'm going to get them on the plane, in the belly of the plane, and then see if they don't intercept them at customs. We'll find out. So if you want a quick demonstration of a few of these, this is Gandalf's sword. This is Glamdring for you Lord of the Rings nerds. You know this is. This is a replica from the movie. This is one of the first swords I got. It's the longest sword, so I had to get, before I go to the other sword, let me show you over here. Had to get this box today. This is a box meant for golf equipment. So at least 49 inches long. This is 49 inches by 15 by 15. And uh, now, so that should be able to fit all these swords. The longest one is the Gandalf sword, Glandering. Um, so that's the first one. Second one is... This sword is 10 points if you can guess what sword this is. If you're an uber fantasy nerd, you know what sword this is. This is Conan's sword, which doesn't have a name. Atlantean something something. There's some writing on there. Fortunately for me, that's a little shorter. Then this one is, these three swords is a... Samurai set. This is the katana. I'm not going to unsheath it right now. Maybe another video. Uh, this is the wakazashi. And this is, I always call this ninja toe, but it's not a ninja toe. This is, uh, ah, I forgot the name. Damn it. Forgot. Anyway, I'll unsheath those later. All right. Next one is, ooh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, baby. This one is, this one's harder to guess. But if you're a total fantasy nerd, from the 80s, you know what this sword is. This is Excalibur from the Excalibur movie. <clears throat> the only thing I don't like about this, it is, a, it is an exact replica, except it has a very stupid thing on the pommel, in my opinion, where it says, let me put that upside down here, hang on. It actually says Excalibur on the pommel, which is pretty stupid. Ring, uh, let's see. King Arthur, which is really dumb. I wish they, they added that to the sword model. I wish they hadn't done that. Be okay if they had a Pendragon sigil on here because that's the name of the family. But, you know, to put Excalibur on there is kind of stupid. Anyway, so that's that. Put that right there. Try not to scratch these motherfuckers. Next one is, uh, oh, this is another sword from not the Lord of the Rings, but the Hobbit. This is... Or Christ. So this is Thor and Oakenshield's sword from the Hobbit movies. What's kind of neat is the handle here is the tooth of a dragon. For real, guys. For real. For real. They actually caught a real dragon, pull his tooth out, and made it the handle. Isn't that cool? Great. Very, very difficult to hold, though. Looks cool, but it's very difficult to hold. <laughs> and then this last sword here is... Kind of a generic sword. Um, I kept it just because there's a certain display I'm working on in Dubai. So for the effort, the, you know, re really for completeness reasons, this is the first sword I ever bought. Actually, this is a gift my dad got me when I graduated high school. It was kind of just a little normal, little wimpy sword. I kept it for sentimental reasons. Anyway, so that's it. So these, how many swords we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight swords. All of these fuckers. Have to go into here, wrapped appropriately, with their tips covered so they don't stab through the box. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to include, a, I'll show this in a second, I'm going to include a letter on the top and bottom of this box 
that says these sort in case they crack this open in Dubai, which they might. Sometimes they do that. If you ship big boxes in there, this is going to go in the belly of the plane. In case they crack this open because they x-ray these things. And they go, oh my God, these fucking swords. In case they crack and open and look at it, I'm going to have a letter at the top of the box and the other side of the box, both sides, that actually says these are decorative swords. They are not sharp. And then I'm actually going to have a Xerox copy of both sides of my residency card. I am a legal resident, blah, 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 just to make sure there's no problems at customs. We'll find out. Now, there is possible, there is a non-zero chance that this, all these things get confiscated at the airport. And I may have a real problem. I hope not. It's going to really suck if that happens, but we'll find out. Also, the uh, size and shape of the box is a little weird, you know? So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, Emirates is a pretty cool airline, so that they sh shouldn't be a big deal, but we'll find out. We'll see what happens. So the first thing I need to address when packing these bastards is that I need to make sure that the tips are covered. Because what I don't want, as these are jostled around at various airports, really it's going to be two airports. It's going to be Seattle, or it's a Seattle and then a direct flight to Dubai from Seattle. So I got to make sure the tips are covered because I don't want these to puncture through the side of the box. That would be a problem. So thankfully, I have kept most of these little plastic tip covers for most of the swords. So that's covered. Obviously, the Japanese swords are covered because they're sheathed. This one is covered. Excalibur is good and Orcrist is good. My old sword is a problem, and the Gandalf sword is a problem, which makes sense because those are some, two of my oldest, or among the oldest swords I've got. So I have to come up with a solution. So what I figured out on my try is I recently got a new laptop, and when it was shipped to me, it had, you know, came one of these stupid things. So I sliced this open with some scissors, and now I have kind of this styrofoam base. I'm just going to stab that onto the sword tips, Hopefully that should be enough. You know, I'm worried that as they get punctured, they'll push, you know, further into the styrofoam and pop out the other side. Hopefully not. But I have some other plans to uh, alleviate that. We'll see what happens. All right. So this is what I've come up with so far. I made sure to stab the little tiny styrofoam thingy in the thickest part of the styrofoam, which is at the bottom. That is glamdring, which is a very pointy end. And then this one is my old sword, which is not very pointy, but that's what I've got. So that should be okay once I wrap the sword. So the next step now is I'm going to bubble wrap all these goddamn swords. That'll be fun. Okay. Bells, come here. This is Bells. This is Pink Firefly's gay little dog. Bells, Bells, look. Bells. That's that is Pink Firefly in her bathroom bitching about her hair. That's, I have to put it in a ponytail again. You have to put it in a ponytail. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. When you're a girl, you bitch about your hair. It's just part of being a girl. All right. Next step: wrapping. All right. So here's the baseline. I have a bunch of bubble wrap over there, and I cut two lengths, which is the length of the longest sword, which is glamdring. Not quite long enough for the pommel, but I'll figure that in a little bit. And so I put one on top of the other with a little overlap. And I'm just going to wrap it up as tight as I can like a burrito all the way down. Uh, this will be complicated down by the handle here. So I'm going to have to maybe get another piece down there. By the way, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I have no expertise in this area whatsoever in terms of wrapping anything. So I'm sure that uh, there might be one or two sword nerds watching this video or packing nerds who say, Now, Caleb, that is not the correct way to wrap a Thor. According to my calculations, what you have to do, I don't give a fuck. They don't care. So, again, not come independent. Just want it wrapped up so it doesn't get scratched or fucked up and doesn't bounce around the box. All right, this is the completed project here. All nicely tight and wrapped with the bubble wrap. Not too bad. Kind of impressed with myself. So, that's the end. Wrap that around with that styrofoam. Looks like a weird kind of golf club. Almost looks like a golf club from a distance. And I just used normal, you know, scotch tape to wrap the bubble wrap because, you know, who the fuck cares? So uh, that's it. Had a little trouble down here, but not a big deal. Had to cut a second piece for this, which is also not a big deal. And this is the hardest sword to wrap and the most difficult in terms of size and shape. So I always like to start with the hardest thing first. So that's good. Let's wrap some more swords. All right. This is the second one. This is my old medieval sword that also did not have a tip cover. So that's that uh, crazy... <laughs> Styrofoam thing, thing I put on the end. Um, 
This was a little difficult, but not nearly as difficult as the other one. <sighs> Tips of the pommel are popping out. That's fine. I don't really give a shit about that. It's going to be covered in packing peanuts. I'll show you toward the end of this. Um, and I just realized something. I, I'm an idiot. You know what I should have done? Alpha male 2.0, alpha male 2.0 business model. What should I have done? I should have outsourced this entire thing. I should have, a week or two ago, hired someone to come over here and package all these swords, wrap them, package them, all that stuff. I should have outsourced this. And it just goes to show that even I, sometimes I'm a dumbass and don't think to outsource my SW work because this is very SW. Am I getting paid right now? No. Am I improving my business right now? No. Am I improving my health right now? No. Am I improving my woman life? No. I'm just, I'm just packing fucking swords. But anyway, uh, let's do some more swords. Got a bunch up there. And uh, we'll see where I get up. All right. I am done wrapping all the swords. And what I did right there is I combined the three Japanese swords in one wrap because they already have the wooden sheaths. So I'm less concerned about those. But there they all are. The next step is to get them into that big-ass box without rumbling around as the box is moved with the bags of packing peanuts I have over here. So phase two. All right, here's where I am so far. Let's see if you can get in there with the light. I'm not sure how much you can see this with the lighting. The swords are in there and the bottom third of the tall box is full of packing peanuts. What I did is I arrayed the swords so they're all pointing diagonally, touching each other. That makes them less likely to move around. Now, obviously, I need to fill <laughs> this box with more packing material. I tried to get at the UPS store and various other places actual blocks of styrofoam, and they didn't have them. Uh, they had sheets of styrofoam, which might, I don't know, might work. But what I decided to do is there's another box or two of stuff. I have this here for uh, that I want to take to Dubai on this trip. And instead of having a separate box, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this box to push the swords together to reduce the amount of movement as these swords get transported literally to the other side of the planet. And so I'm going to just stuff this box with as much stuff as I possibly can and the other stuff I have to pack and then fill the rest with packing peanuts and other packing materials. So uh, that'll be the next phase. But so far, so good. They barely fit. That's the tallest one. It barely fit to the top of the box. And as I said, this is box. This is a box for um, golf equipment. So that's why it's so tall. Now, I'm going to include a little letter in the box and tape to the outside of the box once they wrap it with that green packing material. And I can't show you the whole thing because I got some personal stuff on there. But it basically said these swords are not sharp. I'm a legal full-time resident. da 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 and uh, below that is my, I'm not going to show you my phone number. And I have a copy <clears throat> on this letter of my, the front and back of my residency card. Because as I said, I was told by them that these swords would be okay as long as they weren't sharp and as long as I was a resident. So I'm just putting this inside the box and on the outside of the box just in case they slice this box open because they freak out and the x-rays show that they have swords in the box. Hey, it's okay. They're not weapons, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to include this letter in the box and on the outside of the box. Okay, so there's that son of a bitch. It's laying flat with our other luggage. I put top at the top to make sure that the points of the swords are down at the bottom. To make sure in case they open it in customs, they don't hurt themselves. And the letter is actually on the top if they open it at the top. So we'll see what happens next. All right, I am now on the other side of the planet, back home in Dubai, and there is the box. I had them wrap it in the Seattle airport. I usually do that when I transport boxes. Here's another one. And so what they did, if you can see the stickers in there, easy, it's better to see these stickers. They did actually crack these boxes open and take a look at what was inside, but who cracked them open? Who cracked them open? Did Dubai crack them open? No, United States cracked them open, even though I was leaving the United States. So you'll find that Western countries are much more paranoid about this stuff than small, organized, rising countries like Dubai. So if you look at the top here, they have some of those stickers up there. So now the moment of truth, I'm actually gonna crack this thing open and make sure all the swords are in there. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna show you something else that I actually got successfully through customs that is even more important. So I've just removed the wrapping. And I labeled the top the top because I wanted to make sure they wouldn't stab themselves in case they open it. And you can see the 
TSA stickers from the United States on there. So Dubai did not crack this open once again, the United States did. All right, let's see if my swords are inside here. All right, I just cracked this open. And so there's this very nice, very friendly notice of baggage inspection by our way too big, overbearing, collapsing government to make sure you're not a terrorist. Left the United States government, great, whatever. So this is something I put on the top. I didn't show you this last time. I didn't show you when I packed this. This is just an entire roll of packing um, foam. Uh, what do you call it? I don't know what you fucking call that. Let me pull this out here. Hang on. I love packing peanuts. It's great. Pull this out. Okay, sorry for the cut there. I actually dropped the phone. Fun. So looking inside, I just pulled all the packing stuff out. We should see six swords. And one of the six is the three sword set. So here's the Japanese swords. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got them all. Success. Woo, don't have to worry about that anymore. Kind of nice. Now let me show you something else I transported that I didn't mention. So in my backpack on this same trip from the United States to Dubai, uh, this is my carry-on bag now. I had something in here that was kind of important. And I was anticipating possible problems either with Dubai or the United States, but fortunately I had not a single problem with either one, and that is this. Let me pull it out here. This. Hmm, what's this? Well, I will show you. All right, I had to, I had to cut this, the tape that I put on here. It's hard to do with one hand. These are a portion of my gold collection. These are my gold coins, some of them. Uh, these are half ounce and full ounce coins. There's another coin I actually have in the backpack here that was separate from the rest. See if I can find it. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. American Gold Eagles. This is a full ounce gold coin. So this is part of my gold investing. And uh, hang on a moment. It's hard to do with one hand. There we go. Not bad. So all told, this is about 27, no, no, excuse me, $22,000 worth of gold coins that I got through customs both ways. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, don't you have to declare if it's more than $10,000? Ah, that's the United States. So when you leave the country, you don't have to declare anything. You have to declare when you enter a country, and Dubai doesn't really care. So Dubai's rule is the American equivalent of $27,000. So since this is under $27,000, I did not have to declare any of this stuff. And my swords aren't worth more than whatever the difference would be, $8,000. So as always, I follow the law wherever I am. If I had transported more than $27,000, I would have declared it on a form. I would have, you know, followed the rules. But this worked out very well. This was in my backpack, on my back the entire way, carry-on bags, <laughs> $23,000 worth of gold coins. Not bad. So a very successful trip. Everything worked. Awesome.